Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Chase. And this is our home on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And we're so excited to show you around. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! I'm Chase Watts. And I'm Stephanie Watts. And we're here at our home on Cape Cod, a historic maritime town off the coast of Massachusetts. Back in 2012, we first came to Cape Cod with Steph's family. Mm -hmm. And the minute we stepped foot here, we fell in love. So every Absolutely. year since we started vacationing here once a year, and it was always a dream to be able to buy a home here. But we always thought it would happen much later in life, not when we were younger and with little kids. Right. Um, but in 2020, the stars aligned. We were um, browsing real estate listings just for fun. And this house showed up. And yeah. I told Steph that day, I said, one day when we own a house on the Cape, this is the dream. <laughs> this a historic this home. This house is everything yeah. we would ever want. Yeah. So um, at the time, we didn't think we would be buying a house on yeah. the other side of the country because we're from Utah. Our jobs are in Utah. Right. And so it was kind of a pipe dream. It felt at the time. so far away. And we, a couple days later, we ended up being at a close friend's home and we were showing them the listing, talking about our dream to them. And my friend looked at me and she said, Well, why don't you buy it now? We were like, And honestly, we were stunned. Yeah. Because we, we hadn't actually made that connection. And I think it's because in our mind, like we had said, we thought it would be later. We we didn't expect to be able to do something like that. Yeah, so the next day we got pre-approved and we flew out here, came and saw the house. Yep. When we pulled up to the house, windows were rolled down. We pulled in the driveway, we saw the pond, we could hear the birds and we both started crying. We looked at each other and- And we knew. When you know, you, when know, you know. you know. The tears were the tears were indeed flowing. Yeah, so it's a really special home. It was built in 1639 by William Newland. He was one of the original Quakers here in America, and yeah. he used this house as one of the original Quaker house meeting places. Um, at the time, he built just the first room of the house. It was a small salt box, but in the 1800s, the owner then increased the size to a three-four scape. Yep. We're actually high school sweethearts. We um, we were cheerleaders together in high school. Yeah. And we were cheer captains. And we actually weren't allowed to date on our team. So we secretly dated for years. Yeah, for years without even our best friends knowing. Do you want to know what the secret is? I'll tell you the secret. The secret is you avoid each other in public. <laughs> yeah. You just avoid each other because if you're not talking to each other with other people around, they're not seeing the sparks fly. Yeah. So behind okay? behind closed doors, though, we were dating. <laughs> and then after we graduated high school, um, we started dating publicly. And then yeah. we kind of broke up. Then we dated other people. Let's and then just say third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. <laughs> and what's our year? So we've known year? each other for 18 years and we've been married for 11. What? Yeah. That's cool. So we, we have did. an eight-year-old. Her name is Hampton. And we have a five-year-old and his name is Klein. This hallway leads to all the main things in the house. The primary bedroom, bathroom, living room, other bedrooms, as well as the stairways that go up and down the stairs. What's really interesting to me about this hallway is everyone thinks that this these stripes are a wallpaper, but they're actually not. It didn't make sense for us to do a striped wallpaper on on a ceiling that had so much slant to it. So we actually had a painter eyeball the stripes so that visually 
they would look normal when in actual in actuality they're crooked as much as the house is. Yeah, and with our entryway because it's such a tight space, it was really important to us to do something that was really impactful when you right. first walk in, especially because as we go throughout the house, the house leans like. 45 degrees in some spots. Absolutely. So. It settled about 200 years ago in this back corner. So we'll make sure you can see that as well. Okay, so the we have black and white checkered floors. These are actually about 200 years old. Um, we haven't even touched them. And then it's really important to us to always bring the outside in. So nature is very important to us. Green is a neutral in our life. Green is a so neutral. So that is why we chose green. And then we like hints of blue, um, kind of a nod to the ocean aspect of it. Most things that we found in the house, we did find locally. And so these plates that we have here orchestrated on the back of the wall, we loved that the traditional is usually a deeper blue with white. And we loved that this was a light blue with white situation. It was originally a salt box, classic Cape Cod salt box. Yep. It is now a classic Cape Cod three-fourths cape. Yep. Um, it's very classic, timeless. I mean... It's exactly so. what this area and what the cape is known for. I remember being in high school taking a class on regular, on like different types of architecture, and there's literally a home called the Cape House and our house literally is the cape house so there's no more quintessential home that you could be in than in my opinion than this very home mm -hmm. at the end of the hall is our living room let's head in here we are in the living room most everything in this room was sourced either off facebook marketplace or from local antique or vintage shops or even local bookshops. So, yeah, so something we love about this room, we spend a lot of time in this room with our family. Um, this, we're, we're very into antique art and we right. love a good deal. So, it's really important to us to always look on Facebook Marketplace, go to antique shops. And about two years ago, Steph said, for my birthday, yes, I would I love to fill this whole wall with um, antique art. We're gonna go out in one day my birthday and we're gonna find everything that we need for this fall and you know what we did we, we found, found everything, everything that one day at one antique shop for this wall and it's one of our favorite walls in the house a way that we make a, a small space like this feel really lived in with a lot of soul is we love to layer we love lots of furniture we love lots of textures um putting things in here that we love we love antique art obviously so and from a utilitarian standpoint this house, while she's very small, she actually sleeps nine. And so we knew if nine people can sleep here, we need to have as much seating and make it as comfortable and as cozy as possible. And what's the point in having a couch if it's not comfortable enough to sit on and relax, read, talk with people and enjoy the fire? And really one of our philosophies, even if you decorate a whole house in white, it still needs to be lived in. So we're not worried about our kids jumping on the furniture, hanging out, right. having drinks in here. It's just part of what makes a home a home. Obviously the bookshelves, we love antique books. Reading is really important to us. And this mirror, I actually found this mirror for $90 on Facebook Marketplace. And it was so, up in someone's attic collecting dust. Yeah. And it still has the original tag work and labeling on it from the late 1700s. Yeah. With our bookshelves, we we love the ocean. That's a big reason why we're here on Cape Cod. We're right. less than a mile from the beach. And so along with antique books, we love collecting different type of coral and shells. Absolutely. So that's one way we've just really layered in, in here to make it feel really lived in. It's that nod to maritime and to coastal and nautical without being without it being too obvious or too apparent. Yeah. The really beautiful thing that we do love in here is this table. Once again, a Facebook marketplace find um, from about three streets over. This is actually a hand carved base from the 1600s. Mm -hmm. We don't know when they added the marble onto it, but you know, it's the perfect size for in here because it's a small space. This is actually made by one of my favorite potters who actually lives in England. And it is, it's, 
I couldn't, what I loved about it is I couldn't quite tell if it reminded me of a seashell or if it reminded me of a flower. And I loved all the texture and the movement in it. And then for the holidays, I thought, what says holidays more than gilded fruit? So I just have <laughs> these gilded figs just sitting beautifully, being able to shimmer and shine in the firelight. Obviously this is a small room, it's compact, but we still have some opportunities to really make it feel festive. And the first with that was bringing in all of the baubles and all of this different dimension into our Trillion chandelier. And really the chandelier, we wanted this for years. We for just never years. had a great space to put it. So when we bought this house, it this was is the perfect time. light for in here. It was time. This is a this is a Stephanie Watts dream come true. This being in one of my houses. And I love the fact that I get to decorate it like this for the holidays. It just feels so fun and whimsical. And at night when the fire's going and everything's sparkly and happy, it just feels so delicious. And then with this mantle right here, we love early American love style. It. So, you know, who doesn't love little women during Christmas? Who doesn't? Okay. So who doesn't? Decorating with a little bit of dried oranges. Dried orange slices. Some nice garland and just really simple. This is just fresh pine from the local nursery. And then we have these pewter early American style candlesticks holders. And these beautiful square candles are a gift from a friend. Yeah. The desk, we actually last night we were sitting here in here with a fire. Yeah. And we thought, that is the perfect desk. We're so glad we found that years ago. This desk will never leave. It will never leave. It's, it's too perfect. Yeah. Uh, once again, another Facebook marketplace find. And Drove we found all it. the way to Rhode Island. Yeah. And it's dainty, but also impactful right in this little corner. And you'll notice here the floor slopes tremendously down toward this right angle. When we, when the home inspector came and he was checking the foundations and checking everything with the house, he said that our home settled about 200 years ago so that we should be pretty set. We're settled on bedrock, but all of the furniture in this room tends to shift one way. <laughs> so this desk that we have in the corner, it is, is bolted. it's bolted and attached. Yeah. And that's one more reason why it will never leave because and she is, she's bolted in place. Yeah. And this is one of those rooms where you do have to be careful. Because if you lose your balance, absolutely, you will tumble. Our son learned to walk on these floors, and now he has He's an excellent, excellent walker. <laughs> he has excellent balance now. And lastly, I truly come from the school of thought of there is always room for a Christmas tree, even when there's no room for a Christmas tree. And I feel like this small little baby tree is evident of that. It's a little faux tree that we just picked up. I love the basket that it came in. And it's as simple as adding on these chocolate colored bows and the little baubles that sparkle and shine, a star on top. I love seeing it outside when we're in the back, when I'm walking by the pond. I love looking in and seeing it sparkle and shine. And it just adds so much to the feeling in the home during the holidays. So we were actually really lucky when we bought the house we the last owners put in new plumbing new electrical new furnace generator they put and in a roof. all the behind the scenes yeah. things so that when we actually came in for us we were able to do everything cosmetic and with what chase is saying we like to do our historic properties and our renovations within the spirit and the character of the thing itself so here Fire. you see a lot of nods to nautical, mm -hmm. a lot of connections to the sea, a lot of connections to what life feels like as a New Englander on Cape Cod, but they're nothing that feels too obvious. They're things that we feel would have been gathered and collected by say a sea captain and things that would have made him feel at home and would have brought, that he would have brought attention to when he would have guests visiting his home. We knew we had a very romanticized idea of what Cape Cod, of what New England Cape Cod felt to us. And we, in our renovation and in our remodeling, we wanted to really pull that together to make it an experience, not only for our family, but truly for anyone who would come and visit. This is the kid's bedroom. Yeah. So we obviously have a daughter, we have a son. They actually have rooms upstairs, but it's as too far they're away. little, yeah, they like it's being close to away. us. So technically it's like, 
it's our daughter's room, but they like sleeping in the same room so together. So the children's The children's room. room. So this is it. Um, this wallpaper was actually here when we bought it. Which loved we it love. so much. And lots of nights are spent in here reading books with the kids. And... We, whenever cousins come, this is the room that they all pile into. It's just, it becomes just this huge fort of blankets and pillows and everything. And we wanted to make it feel all the more whimsical, especially for the holidays. So it, it's as simple as adding adding some star garland, yeah. truly. And then it looks out, out to our formal, formal garden. It looks out to the pond. So it's a... We just it's it's such a cozy little cozy room space. that we hope so many memories are made in so as anybody that owns an old home knows these houses can be a little quirky so we've got one more room on this main floor so we've got the bedroom the living room our bedroom and then the kitchen dining sunny sunroom is actually in the basement but we'll take you to the bedroom first yeah so this is the primary bedroom this is a space that we wanted to keep really simple it's the first space off when you walk in from the front door. Yeah. We really wanted this space to feel serene, like a retreat. So we kept it very unfussy, very layered with lots of blankets and pillows. We wanted it to feel grand and cozy all at the same time. And something that is really special about this room is this is the original part of the house that was built in 1639. Obviously in the 1800s, they added more detailed work into it but it's a, it's amazing to think how many people have actually lived in this specific room this mantle one thing i love about it that i feel like is a hot tip is a lot of times with paint especially if you want something in a matte finish like we did here matte finish on a regular paint will usually pick up oils and dirt and textures and things you don't want so for us we wanted to paint this in a striking black in a matte finish and how we were able to do it where it had such a high quality and was able to bear and and bear and withhold so much was that we actually used a bathroom paint that's good for humidity. And that was our secret. So we were able to use spa paint by Benjamin Moore, and that gave us this matte finish without having to deal with all the trickiness that matte yeah. finishes like usually Like smudges has. and scratches and stuff like that. Smudges, holds scratches, up really well. oils from fingertips. This matte finish holds up really, really well. And then as far as for the holidays, we went in with a pine garland. I have this beautiful, very New England citrus and cinnamon stick and bay leaf beautiful this was actually a gift from a friend as well and then you it can't be new england without the traditional blue and white and everything can have a bow on it in the holidays at least according to me so that's this beautiful fireplace another thing that we did in, in this home especially since we knew so many people would come and visit it and so many things would be happening here is in the fireplaces that we wanted people to know that A, were not to be used for regular fires, and B, we wanted something really beautiful here. We actually got these huge selenite logs. And if you know anything about crystals, you know that selenite is a natural purifier of energy. So we did that in multiple rooms of the house and it's probably one of my absolute favorite things that we did anywhere in the house. Yeah, so we have four fireplaces in the house. Two of them are working, the living room and the dining, so we can, people can put fires in there. We light fires every night in the winter yeah. when we're here. But then the two bedroom fireplaces, they do have the selenite like logs. Perfect. Growing up, my mom was super into design. My dad um, was a faux finisher in, in home, so he worked with a lot of designers. So it's, ever since I was younger, I've been around design. Right. And then when Steph and I became friends, that was just always a big thing in our life. Absolutely. And really for us when we got married chase i feel he was definitely in real estate because home was always so meaningful to him home and what it means to people was really so meaningful to us and it wasn't until 2020 when everything happened with covid that it was a wake-up call in many ways it was a wake up a wake-up call of how do we want to use are the things that creatively make us so happy and how can we move toward living where we want to live which was on the east coast 
and really the genesis of everything that happened was this home this home is the reason why we got into design is the reason why we um we pivoted everything that we do as far as interior designs into creating these beautiful boutique stays in historic homes it all was from finding this house we wouldn't have been able like we wouldn't have been daring to be here without this house yeah and something really important to look back on is Stefan travel has always been very important for stuff and yeah. we used to go to i mean we still do but we when we visit boutique hotels or um boutique quintessential stays like this in other parts of the world we yeah. saw that there was a gap in the market in places that right. we loved Absolutely. so cape cod we have a home in mexico in Connecticut, we, we found these places that really lit us up and that we love. Absolutely. And we wanted to be able to provide beautiful places for other people to come and experience that maybe they wouldn't be able to experience in their daily life. Exactly. And it seemed like such a beautiful gift that we could also get and give being able to give the opportunity for people to come and spend their milestones and their precious vacation and family time together felt like a, something we could offer to individuals but also when people come and stay at this home and really all of our homes they're giving us their love as well and their memories and we truly feel that that's adding to the magic and the energy of this house it feels really reciprocal being in the industry that we're now in by creating these boutique stays for people yeah because not only do we get to experience them as our own family home but like i mentioned other people get to come and spend their family mem memories here and that feels just really special to us absolutely so let's head downstairs we have the kitchen and the dining and the sunroom down there. Welcome to the dining and kitchen. So first thing you will notice in here is the ceiling height. So if you're over six foot, <laughs> you have to duck because Watch your head. from floor to the bottom of the beam is six foot and then up to the subfloor is six, eight. Yes. So we have this room as the dining room, but it hasn't always been the dining room. We found pictures of the home previously where two different owners of the home actually had this being their living room. But for us, it just works so much better for the way our life and our family functions, having a dining room right off the kitchen. Okay. So I know nothing about these beautiful tiles. We'll turn to the experts for that. But I do know the brick in our fireplace is a piece of Cape Cod history. It's actually West Barnstable brick. And before there was a mandated size of brick in the US, these were being made and sold all over Cape Cod. And once the size of brick was standardized, this company went automatically out of business because their bricks were much smaller than the standard size. So we do have this little piece of history of Cape Cod right here in our fireplace. And then once again with Christmas, we each space we do for Christmas, sometimes we do it a little bit more elegant, sometimes yeah. We do it a little bit more kitschy. We just went classic red and green. Now this house, because we're not here full time, we do do it a little bit more minimal. Our home in Connecticut, we have our Christmas tree that the kids have and all the fun little ornaments, but here we do it a little bit more yeah. designed. Yep, and so this is beautiful pine garland from the local nursery. And then these are actually winter berries just from our, our bush in the backyard. Yeah. So this dining table, we play lots of games. We eat, Seven is, Stephanie is an amazing cook. So it fits six, but really we can really squeeze about eight to nine people around exactly. this Exactly. And then it does also extend. So this is definitely more of like a breakfast table. I'll say during spring, summer, and fall, we are always eating outside yeah. and enjoying things out there. And on that table, we can see 10 to 12. We love a bamboo moment. And so that's why we selected these. These chairs are indoor and outdoor, and so we love the utility of them. And then we have really cozy chairs that everyone covets at the end, and these are just really cozy little chairs from Restoration Hardware. Yeah, and then if you know us, you know that anywhere we go in the world, we are going to be antique shopping. Absolutely. And if we have to ship it, we will. So this 
lamp is actually, because we're from Utah, we actually found this at an antique shop. And we, we found it probably eight years ago and we never used it at our home in Utah. It just never felt right. But we are all about finding things that you love and that light you up, even if you might not have a space for them right then. So this actually sat in storage for a while, but then once we bought our Cape Cod We knew home, it was perfect for here. Yeah, we shipped it out here. And then once again, with the nautical theme, we love um, nautical art that comes from Cape Cod. We are here for about a month in the summer and then anytime we can when it's not when it's not booked the rest of the year, but we love sharing our home with other people. Yeah, so it's nice because not only do we get to experience it as a second home for us, but we also make an income off of it um, by having other people stay here when we're not utilizing it. We figured this is such a, a beautiful piece of history on Cape yep. Cod that why just have it sit empty when we're not using it and Absolutely. be able to have other people experience it as well. And then we've taken what we've earned from this home and we've snowballed it into other historic homes so that we can keep preserving these beautiful places and these beautiful properties and their history and continue to have them be places for people to experience how people know that this is, you know, Chase and Stephanie. And it's it's certain things we do throughout all of our homes. So, Absolutely. Um, unlacquered brass is really important to us. Organic materials, neutrals, um, those types of things, antique art. Those are all things that we're constantly looking to source for our homes that I feel like really put our touch on it. Absolutely. And those things, they end up creating an aesthetic and an atmosphere that contains not only this sense of time and this sense of character, but really also this sense of allure. And you walk into a home and it creates this encapsulating feeling of, of you just want to know more and you want to spend time and you want to look around and you want to get, you, you want to think of what happened here and the mysteries there. And that is something that we try to do in every space. Coming into the kitchen, this is by far my favorite part of the house. Absolutely. So many memories are made here. This is where breakfasts are made, Christmas cookies are rolled. We make ornaments in here, do crafts. Every It's true. Like The kitchen really is the heart of the home. So um, when we bought the house, we, the only thing that we did keep in here when we started renovating is these cabinets. They were here from, they're probably 30, 40 years old, but we redid everything else. A really special find for us is this table. So we actually found it on Facebook Marketplace again <laughs> um, at an old farm in Connecticut. So we drove out there, but the top was just really slippery. It was slippery. decimated. Yeah, we had to redo the top. So it was a really fun project for us to kind of redo this. My son at the time, um, he was probably what? Two? two. Very um, into power tools. Very into power tools. So he did a lot of the sanding on it. Yeah. And yeah, I just think it's a really beautiful piece that really complements mm -hmm. the kitchen. Yeah. We love, one of our favorite things that we did is changing out all of the hardware in the kitchen. We love these antique brass poles that we did. We just did them everywhere along with painting the cabinetry. And my two favorite things in this kitchen, the absolute first is this waterstone faucet. This was a splurge for us as far as design. We went with it in the unlacquered so that it would patina naturally on its own. And it is- It's a full statement. It is probably the most asked about piece in this entire home. And we love it and so much. Something so it's really important for Steph and I is we definitely do high and low. So Absolutely. obviously you see, we find a lot of really great things on Facebook Marketplace. But if we also find something that is higher end, we're willing to splurge on it if absolutely. we absolutely love it. And actually, we saw this faucet years ago on the 73 Questions with Vogue with Taylor Swift. And yes, when we saw we did. it, we knew it was for us. We knew it was for us. So this is, our, I guess, a little piece of Swif Swifty history, <laughs> according to the Watts. For all you Swifties Watts. out there. And then my second favorite thing in the kitchen is this beautiful tile. It's clay tile, and it's Moroccan. It's all hand glazed. And because we chose this because we wanted something that felt handmade, 
imperfect, again with unfussy, and we wanted something that had a high amount of variation because to us, when I look at a seashell and I'm interpreting all the colors that are hitting my eyes, I wanted that same effect in this backsplash. Once again, another ode to maritime and coastal living. Yeah, and then these lights are from Deval from England. We love them, they're handcrafted. Um, this was one of- Italian range. Yeah, it, it's just, it's a space that we can spend a lot of time in. And to this day, we did this about three and a half years ago. Yep. We come in here every time we're here, we just, and we just think, oh, we love this kitchen so much. Love it. The open shelving is also a fun, a fun thing. So we did the, the unlacquered brass, but these boards are actually old floorboards we found at an old salvage yard. So that's why they're a little bended they're a little and everything. A little imperfect. A little imperfect. We, we didn't want any upper cabinets in here because obviously with it being six feet, we couldn't have something <laughs> too, you know, heavy in here. So we decided yeah, to go with the open condensed. shelving. Signature dishes. So after the Thanksgiving smorgasbord, which I craft and enjoy doing, then we head into our Christmas things. So we are making everything from our traditional pies, Nantucket pie, apple pie. Those are actually the only pies I've made, okay? <laughs> those are the only pies, but I love them and I feel like I have mastered and them. And she's really great at both those so two I've pies. So I've done those too. And then there is nothing better to me than a Christmas dinner with a chowder, whether it be an oyster chowder, a clam chowder, or a corn chowder, as well as turkey and mashed potatoes. So Stephanie, really I'm a one trick pony. Stephanie is the kind of I make cook. a I make a damn good turkey. Yeah, Stephanie is the kind of cook where we when I look in the fridge and the cupboard we have absolutely nothing. And then Steph will come down and make a five course meal out of nothing. It's true. It's and impressive. My, my kids only eat buttered noodles. So really it's just <laughs> cooking for Chase and I. Yeah. Speaking of the holidays and something that I cannot cook is I have never fully mastered the art of a Christmas cookie dough that I can use with an actual cookie press. So I figured what I would end up doing is if I couldn't get these in gorgeous cookies, why not make them into an ornament that I could enjoy all year round? And it's so easy. It's something that I do. I do it with my kids. And really all you need is a cookie stencil, paper clay, and some ornament hooks. I would say the style of the home is a beautiful mix between traditional, coastal, and American. Truly, a, yeah, you know what I would say? I would say American traditional. American traditional. I would say our home is very American traditional, really rooted in the eight, probably I would say the 1830s, 1830s to 1850s. Yeah. I think for me, when I enter a home and I think about what gives a home soul and what makes it soulful, is it, how is it a reflection of the people who currently live there? And I think for us with this home, we wanted that reflection to be us, who we are and our family and how we live and what we value but also how we treat the character and the charm and the history of this home. We're not coming into a place to, to completely change it or to make it something that it's not. We're here to, to help add to the beauty of it, to help add to its soul that was already here. And in doing so, we get a reflection of us that feels that feels true to ourself, but it also feels true to the home. And it's that beautiful marriage between us and the space that I feel really gives the home soul. And to piggyback on that, I think design is so subjective. You Absolutely. Know, so many people say, oh, well, this is good design or this is bad design. Right. In the design world, there are no rules. And I think what truly gives mm. a home soul is the people that reside there, what are the things that they love? I love that. That are in that house. Because truly, that is all that matters is that beautiful memories are being made and I that agree. people are filled with things that are beautiful to them. One thing may be beautiful to one person that may not be to the other, and that's right. okay. But it's the person that's living with, 
living there, that's going to be the most important on what they're looking at that's surrounding them. Absolutely. Like any quirky old house, there's always some little things that don't quite add up. And one of ours is this fun window that actually looks into our sunroom addition. We're not sure quite when it was done, but it was sometime in the 1900s. And it is quite a relief because being in the kitchen where everything is so short, we do have vaulted ceilings in here. So it is comfortable for all heights of humans. This is our sunroom where everything else in the house really happens. It's where the cozy nights are done, when we're having a movie night, when you're drinking your coffee, looking out on the pond in the morning, another spot that we have to sit and read. We wanted to utilize these old shelves. I'm sure they were old figurine shelves. And if you know anything about us, we're always gonna display a book everywhere that we can. And then this room, we wanted it to feel really dramatic and cozy, not too stuffy. We didn't want it to be stuffy and we just wanted it to be a really cozy, casual place that anyone could gather, to, and we wanted it to feel like the perfect environment for people just to relax. Yeah, and this room is spectacular because the views out of it, this is where most people want to gather because when you turn around, it has the beautiful pond, you can see mm -hmm. historic houses on the other side of the pond, and yeah, it's just a, it's a really, we were able to go dark in here because we have so much light. Mm -hmm. Chandelier is an Aaron Lauder piece. I picked it alone because I think you'll notice from me from this whole conversation is I'm really into shells. I'm really into their tonality and their shape and how curvaceous they are and organic. So we wanted another nod to what it is to be close to the ocean, and we found that right here in this. When we got it, it was a little too bright white for my taste, so I mixed I mixed some really, some really light um, ivory paint, and I brushed it over it lightly just to make it so it wasn't so stark of a contrast. Yeah, and then we have obviously more brass, <laughs> the lamps we found at an antique shop here on Cape Cod, more of our um, sea captain art. Mm -hmm. And we like a lot of, in a lot of our spaces, we like neutrals. We like it feeling light, bright, and airy. But in here, we added some more textures and, and we found felt a little this, bit more cozy. We found this perfectly sized ottoman, again, from a marketplace seller. And we reupholstered it in a Ralph Lauren fabric that just felt really fun. And also, nothing says New England more to me than a stripe or a plaid. Yeah. So that felt perfect for us. Of course, in every room, we need to do something festive. And I feel like this tree is the ultimate proof that it doesn't have to be too fussy to feel festive and to feel cozy. And we have this beautiful tree with white lights that we took some of our natural garland that we added into it in different places just to add some more elements. And it was as simple as T making bows out of a beautiful chiffon ribbon and adding it all over the tree. And it's just proof that you don't need a lot to make something feel really magical. I think less is more and sometimes more is more as well. <laughs> There's no rules. You get to do what you love and this is one way you can if you want to. Every room we say is our favorite space. But truly, maybe it is. Like maybe they every all room are. is our favorite. But outside is also another really amazing space that really sold us on the house. So let's go outside. So starting on the outside, we have a lot of people ask us what these are. In the summer, this is just all filled with beautiful green grapevines, and then we have beautiful hydrangeas, and then obviously like true Cape Cod fashion, we have a shingled cedar outside. I feel like the essence of a Cape Cod summer is really known, but my favorite time of year is actually autumn and winter. It's that magic time between Halloween and Christmas. All of that space is my absolute favorite time on Cape Cod. There's this magic on the Cape through all the seasons, and it's something that is absolutely encapsulated in nature. Yeah, and it's really fun in the backyard. We have uh, a small dock, 
So in the summertime, fall, spring. Right now, you can yeah. go out and fish now. Our rowboat is out for the season, but we do have a rowboat. We can fish off the dock. We have little electric motorboats for the kids. Um, obviously, every Cape Cod home needs Adirondack chairs. Yeah, it's just a really great spot. We, like we'd mentioned, we're, we're less than a mile from the beach, so we can walk to the beach or it's a really quick drive. Um, we do not swim in the pond though. It does have snapping turtles. And when I say snapping turtles, We're I don't mean like this. We're not talking about snapping turtles. Like this, like large snapping turtles. So we don't- Were our turtles the same? Yeah, we don't, we don't <laughs> swim in it. Also something we really love, it's out of, it's not out of commission, but we closed it for the season, is we do have an outdoor shower, oh. which is a lifesaver when you- Have you even lived life if, if you, you don't have an outdoor, shower, an outdoor shower, especially after a day at the beach and having sand all over, we don't have to have sand trek through mm. the house. We all just hop in the outdoor shower and wash ourselves it's off. It's beautiful. One thing I love about Cape Cod in winter is it's actually warmer than the rest of New England because we get that warm ocean breeze. We're outside. It has the crisp winter smell in the air but it's not frigid like it is at our house in Connecticut or other places in New England this time of year. Yeah. And that brings me to one of my favorite things that we do all year. It's so fun is sitting right here in front of the fire outside. Yes, yeah, so we have a little shed. The shed is unfinished at the moment. We got plans. Um, we, yeah, got we got plans. plans. But we always we spend most nights out here until it gets too frigid um, with the kids and the kids play a lot outside we here. read we roast marshmallows i would like us to start singing songs but we're not <laughs> we're not apparently that family just yet but i'm trying okay i'm trying but being out here and relaxing at night is just splendid and it's really nice we're we're right we're not in town but we're right on the outside of town so it takes us it's a five minute walk to our main street and it's just a really quintessential Shopping, community. restaurants, it's yeah. gorgeous. We're in one of the, we're in actually in the largest historic district in all of America. So anywhere you walk around here, there's beautiful historic homes, um, mm -hmm. beautiful foliage, nature, pond, ocean. It just, you really get the best of all worlds here. It's wonderful. So let's head back inside. The last part is the upstairs. Like we said, the house, even though it looks small, it fits nine, it sleeps nine people. So yeah. we have three bedrooms and a bathroom. We'll show you upstairs. Yep. Here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. Who wears the design pants? We both wear the design pants, but how are they worn, okay? <laughs> who's wearing them like Levi's and who's wearing them like culottes? This is the question. <laughs> Because this man, he is very focused and direct on things that he likes, things that he's okay with, A, B, C, and D. I like thinking of things a little outside the box, which sometimes yeah. he's like, I'm a, here. What? I'm a little bit more rigid. I have a spectrum of things that yeah. are beautiful to me. And I'm here Stephanie making is, sure we add some flavor. Yeah, Stephanie is flitty floaty when it comes to design. Absolutely. Which, which is back to the question of who yang. wears the design pants it's yin and yang. we complement each, complement each other so yeah. well when it comes to design because i have my strengths and she has her strengths if we were to close our eyes and choose who wears the design pants i think we would open our eyes and both of our fingers would be pointed at yeah. chase <laughs> what ends up happening is he has this epic plan of a b c and d and then i narrow it down to a and b yeah Sometimes just A, yeah. but sometimes A and B. And so it complements each other. It complements us really where, well because he has this huge energy to be able to Great. like search and go down rabbit holes and get all this information to then present it to me. And then Steph fine tunes it. Absolutely. So this is our son Klein's room, another one of our favorite rooms. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> it really is. So this is another one of the fireplaces that doesn't work. So we put the selenite logs in it. Our son really loves nautical. He takes after our own heart. This sailboat is something that he found in an antique shop that, that he loved. He had to have. Had to have. He loves horseshoe crabs. So, so when this was found on the beach, it was a huge find for him. Yeah. So it is proudly displayed. And kind of the theme in here, we love... You know, we love adding a little bit of color for him. 
but we kind of wanted you to feel like you were at a summer camp in New England. Yeah, so the aim of this room is really feeling a little more collegiate and a little more New England summer camp. That's yeah. a great way to put it. And then as far as feeling festive in here, these colors, they took me right back to 1994. <laughs> and so I just could, we couldn't resist, honestly. It felt too nostalgic to not put something, put something like this. And then as far as his fireplace, we went with the selenite, selenite logs again. One of my favorite things ever. Yeah, and we then just the have ores, to do it. The ores in the corner, we found those in the shed when we bought the house. Um, we painted stripes on them. Because summer camp. Yeah, and then same thing with the wall. Once again, we went antiquing and found all these things on Cape Cod. And something I love about this room as well is this is another really slanty room. So you gotta be really careful not to hit your head. But it's really... This is the room that is right above the white living room that has the corner of the house that sank into the fount that sank and settled about 200 years ago. Our favorite thing that we actually will talk about this quite randomly is these windows over here. The fact that they added these two little windows so you into the house the so that you could look out to the pond. It just feels so whimsical and magical to me. And I love the essence of what this bedroom feels like. Home means truly we're a place that you can gather together with the people that you love and create those special memories that will last a lifetime, whether it's just with one person, whether it's just with yourself or a whole family. I truly feel that my whole personality has been based <laughs> on the word home. Mm -hmm. Finding a home in self, a home in where you live, a home in your family, a home with friends. Home to me is not only a place, it's a feeling. And it's the feeling that I aim to create in any, in any house or any place or any building that I touch. I want to create that sense of home for anyone, whether it be my family or friends or strangers. I want people to feel safe and comfortable and I want them to feel like they can do anything. And I feel like that is what home truly means. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.